What's going on guys? Ryan with Car Audio Inc. I have two meters in front of me, both from Phonic. We got the PAA3, which they don't make anymore, and the PAA3X, which you can still buy. This one retails for $850-ish. So this one has a attached microphone, which is pretty annoying. It, uh, I feel like it's just a matter of time before it breaks off. Um, whereas this one has a detachable microphone and they give you like a six foot mini XLR cable so that you can do the whole pink noise thing outside of the car. This one, you can do it outside the car too, you know, with the microphone. Um, they have software that you can run on a Windows PC that'll give you the readout, like if you don't want to be in the car. So this one's kind of like out of the box. You don't need a computer if that's what you're doing. I don't do that. So that doesn't matter to me, but if you're doing that, that's probably a pretty important thing to know about them. So turn them on at the same time. And because it's gonna take so long, I'm just trying to think. So that one is ready to go. This one has a stop start feature so when you turn it on, it's not running. This one's always taking measurement when it's on. So it's similar to a digital multimeter in that way. And I like that better. Um, let's see. We're still waiting for that one. Here's how you get to the menu. They both have the cog wheels that I don't use. And personally, I think in terms of user friendliness, this one is better. It's just kind of like your typical <laughs> Game Boy kind of menu. And uh, yeah, I don't know what a Game Boy menu is, it's just what it reminds me of. But, and then, so this one, you know, is color and is a little bit better. This one also has a contrast wheel, which I just think is annoying and they should have left it out. Because as you can see, if you go one way, it looks terrible. If you go the other way, it looks terrible. So why didn't they just leave it like that? The reason it's annoying is because for the cold boot, you have to put your finger in there to turn it on and you bump it. So that's something to note. So on this one, you can see stop, start. This little guy running and not running. And then it's just, I find it just kind of confusing to use. This one has a micro SD card you can put in it. This one has internal memory with some banks that you can save readings out on. They both have signal generators in them. So this one does polarity pulses, pink noise, and a one kilohertz tone. This one has sweeps. It has individual frequencies that you can pick, not just 1K as well as the pink noise and the polarity pulses. So it has a feature or two more in that regard. This one has 31 bands and is considered one third octave, where this one has the option of doing 31 and it's either 62 or 61 or something. So you can do one third or one sixth. So this one is technically, you know, more accurate in that sense, or you can identify a certain frequency 
a little bit easier with this one. I like this one better. It turns on way faster. It still has enough bands to see what's going on with the factory head unit. Um, and as well as a factory amplifier or whatever. This one I feel like is more for if you're actually going to use it as an RTA, it's a better option. This one uses four AA batteries, whereas this one uses a LiPo pack. And the battery is already showing signs of aging. Where are you going to get one of these? Um, you're always going to have AA batteries laying around. But... I'm not sure if the company sells like replacements or not because it's a weird looking lipo and uh, you know I'm sure if you dug deep enough you could find something like this but I wouldn't it'd be tough um, so I hope this video has been helpful um, if you are looking at buying either one of these, you'd have to get this one used, but they still sell this one. If you have any questions about these devices, um, leave them down in the comments. I'll try and answer them. All right, bye.